Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. And today I'm going to show you how to make the perfect cup of percolator coffee. One of the great skills that's been lost in these modern days is how to make the perfect pot of percolator coffee. If you like to do primitive camping or if you find yourself in an off-grid situation, it's a great skill to have, especially if you're like me and I love that perfect cup of coffee. Now we actually prefer to perk our coffee over the automatic drip coffee makers, but I'll talk to you about the different things, the grinds and, and reasons why that we do that in a bit. But first of all, I'm going to move you over here where you can see what's going on and we'll get started. So first of all, I want to talk to you about our particular coffee maker. It's a little bit different than what maybe you're, you would normally see in a thrift store or in an antique store. This is actually a campfire percolator, and you can tell that by the hanging handle that it has here. And also you may notice that it doesn't have the glass viewing top on top. Uh, we've had this coffee maker for a long, long time. and you, Well, actually, you can probably tell because it's very black on the inside and you can see also on these parts that they're very black from years of, of use. Now this is your basket, the stem, and the base. And you also have a top that will go on that basket like that, like so. And let's talk about how a percolator actually works. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our water in here and we'll talk about that more in just a second. But and we have our, our internal parts and we'll put those there and our coffee of course will be in our basket. What will happen is when the water heats and boils, it's gonna come up through that stem. Let me show you that, that the stem is actually hollow. You can see that the stem is actually hollow. And the water is gonna come up through there and it's gonna go over the top that has its holes Let's take the basket out again, and you can see the holes in the basket. And that water is going to bathe that coffee. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come up, and it's going to gently rain down over that coffee, and it's going to be extracting that wonderful flavor out of there. But it's going to do it over and over and over. And that's what's going to bring me to talking about different grinds of coffee and why there are different grinds. Now, with a percolator because it's bubbling up and it's going to rain down over that coffee and also you have holes in your basket you're going to want a little bit more coarse grind than you would say for an automatic drip coffee maker because those uh, the automatic drip coffee maker of course the hot water will come up and go over the top usually through a paper filter your coffee will be in that and it only does it the one time so it's got to be a finer grind to extract that coffee out of there so that's why uh, the automatic drip grind is, is a finer grind than say what would be recommended for a percolator. So how do we care for a percolator? Well, coffee leaves an oily residue and you can see here the black and you may can even see in the lid even better than anything else that it is a little bit oily and of course we've got our buildup inside here. Now, I don't I don't use soap on my percolator because I don't want the soap to seep into that seasoning inside the coffee pot and leave a soapy taste in our coffee. And we, we're working really hard for the best cup of coffee and the last thing we want is to have a soapy taste. But what I will do is take like a scotch scrubby, like the green ones that you see. I don't really like to use a, a Brillo pad because it can really be aggressive, but I will take a scotch scrubby and warm water and just scrub the inside and I'll, and I'll scrub the basket and scrub inside and out of that and, and any of the parts that the coffee comes into contact with. It's not going to remove it completely, but it is going to remove the buildup. But actually, when it has a little bit of that on there, it's kind of like your iron skillet. It seasons it, and it really, really gives it that distinctive coffee taste. So let's talk about your ingredients. Of course, it's going to be coffee and water, and that's it. But now my preference is the community. I like the community breakfast blend. This is actually made in New Orleans, which is a little bit regional for us. 
We're a couple of hours north of New Orleans. And that's the one that I prefer. Now, my boys just prefer the great classic Folgers. It's got a little more bite to it, a little bit more bitter, but the Breakfast Blend Community is a very smooth coffee, and that's, that's the one that I prefer. Of the two ingredients, the coffee and the water, by far the most important is, is to start with the purest, cleanest, freshest water that you can. And what we prefer is our harvested rainwater. We actually harvest our water here, and it gives the coffee just a smooth, clean flavor, taste. It's just wonderful, clear. It's crystal clear when we pour it out of the pot. So if you don't have access to your own rainwater, the next best is going to be distilled. Uh, actually, it's very close to the same flavor. It's very clean and clear, and it, you'll pour up a beautiful cup of coffee if you use distilled. Now, I, if I prefer to stay away from tap water because it does have chemicals in it and it does alter the taste, especially the chlorine. So if you're really striving for that perfect pot of coffee, either your rainwater or your distilled is going to be your best bets. Now we did talk about the coffee already, but now let's talk about how much water that you actually use and why. Okay, so if you see right here, you see that's, that's a pretty tall pot, but we're actually only going to put water to the bottom of the spout right there. And the reason is, is if you come up above just a little bit, then there's holes in this spout right here, uh, like where the, where the water can access the spout actually is what it is. And if you come up to those, then as the water boils and bubbles and is trickling over, it's also going to bubble up out of the spout and spill out onto the stove. So we're going to stay right at the bottom of the spout. And we're going to start with one quart. Now this, this will hold a quart to right there. And this is our rainwater. And it's cool water. You want to start with as cool as possible. Cold even would be great. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and put our basket in. So for this particular pot, and it, it holds a quart to right there, I prefer to use a quarter cup of coffee. Now, a note about that, cooking your coffee longer is not going to make it stronger. What you want to do is if you want a little bit stronger coffee is add more coffee, but you want to keep the cooking time about the same. So don't try to cook it longer to make it stronger. It's actually just going to make it cloudy and make it bitter. So if you want stronger coffee, add a bit more coffee at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and put this in here. Now you notice I haven't turned my flame on yet. And I'm going to distribute this coffee around in the basket a little bit. And I'm actually going to kind of shake it down so that it's kind of level in the basket. And we're going to put our lid on. And we're going to put our top on. And we're going to start our flame. Now I'm going to start it on high until I hear it starting to rumble. And as soon as it starts rumbling, I'm going to turn it down to about medium. I'm beginning to hear that rumble, so now we're going to turn it down because we don't want it to boil and boil and boil and boil because that will add bitterness to your coffee. So right about there, and what it'll do is it'll just gently perk, and I actually only go about maybe two and a half to three minutes. You kind of just know, you get a feel for your coffee pot, so you'll learn what's best for you. But I just don't wanted to remind you that longer perking is only going to make a bitter, cloudy coffee. It's not going to make it stronger. So. You want to add more for stronger coffee, or you want to choose less to make a, a more mild coffee, or even the type of coffee that you use can make a difference. So we're going to go ahead and let this finish perking, and I'll be back in just a bit. about two and a half or three minutes and I can tell by the aroma and just by knowing my coffee pot that it's time to turn it off. So we're going to go ahead and turn it off but now we're not going to pour our coffee up. That perfect pot of perk coffee takes a little bit of patience. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wait and let the coffee water that is in the basket finish trickling down. 
And if we decided to go ahead and pour our coffee now, what would happen is the grounds and the liquid that are still in the basket would pour out around the top edge and make a big mess and ruin our pot of coffee. So we don't want to do that. We're going to go ahead and just exercise a little patience and we'll pour it up in just a bit. So it's time for us to pour that beautiful cup of coffee, but I want to remind you of a couple of things. This is hot. It's metal and it's hot, so you're not, you, know, you don't want to just grab it and start pouring because you're going to burn your hands. So I've got a couple of pot holders here. So let's pour up that perfect cup of coffee. Oh my goodness. Look at how crystal clear and pristine that is. That is a perfect cup of coffee right there. Now, a lot of people like to drink their coffee black, but I like to pizzazz mine up a little bit. So I like to put some local honey in it and of course some half and half. But what makes it even more wonderful is if I can add honey from our beehives and the cream that I use is cream that we pulled off of Lily's Rich Jersey Milk. That is just a little glimpse of heaven. So I'm going to fix this up, add my cream and my honey, and I'll be back with you to share some more words. I know that each of us can look into our own lives and we can find blessings all around us. Uh, and a good cup of coffee is just one of those blessings. But I want to leave you with another one. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And we'll see you on the next video. God bless.